everyone, welcome back to the channel and to Columbia City, our Pacific Northwest project here inspired by Seattle, Portland, Vancouver, and actually a place in, in the Bay Area today. We're going to be building an area over here on a hillside that doesn't actually currently exist. We're going to build the hillside, but it's going to have a bunch of oil tanks on it for a refinery that we're going to build pretty close by. So let's get straight into it. Welcome back everyone, we're here, we're working on a new hillside near what will be the harbor, we're sort of working down shore from there. Right now I just wanted to build something that was based off of uh, something that I actually see pretty often um, here in the Bay Area because in Richmond there's a huge Chevron oil refinery with tons and tons of um, oil storage tanks. And it's on a hillside, which I thought is pretty unique. And um, just the fact that it's on a hill um, is kind of fascinating to me for some reason. It, it just looks really weird just riding by it on your bike because you can actually ride your bike across the uh, bridge to San Rafael. And uh, it's just kind of weird just seeing a huge oil pipeline right next to you. I'm not really used to riding near industrial areas and the um, especially just having all of these... Uh, oil tanks everywhere is just kind of crazy. So I wanted to capture that in game a little bit We're not really gonna build a bike trail, but we're gonna have some bike trails kind of close by um, In you know, future episodes, maybe we'll we'll work on those further We're mostly just gonna be focusing on the hillside itself I just wanted to build something that I you know I've been seeing a lot in real life, you know recently since I've moved to um, Berkeley and really just wanted to capture in game because I haven't really done something like that since uh since Calavera Beach really so which by the way I should probably give a quick update on Calavera Beach so I'm not currently planning on doing more episodes of that series uh which is the first time I've done that for any particular series I don't know if I've really mentioned this before I might have actually given you this update already but it probably is worth repeating uh, basically Calavera Beach my Southern Californian series inspired by Laguna Beach um, which I haven't really uploaded consistently since the beginning of the series itself um, I'm really like I, I don't in I don't like almost anything I've done in that series to a point where I'd like to build around it like I really just want to destroy basically everything I've, I've done there so I don't really see a point in continuing the series as is um, there are obviously certain areas in that series that I really really uh, find interesting and I mean I think maybe one day I could do an, another Southern Californian series with the explicit purpose of sort of demonstrating how harmful the urban planning um, of Los Angeles is but that's not going to be Calavera Beach but yeah I'm basically going to be sidelining Calavera Beach until further notice which I have never done with the series uh, even New Windsor I, I finished completely at least um, I, I gave it a nice closer I'm really not going to do that with Calavera Beach I don't really have uh, an intention of making any more videos for that and I'm one of those people who really doesn't like leaving anything unfinished so th that was sort of a hard decision for me and it's always going to be sort of lurking there as a thing that I never really finished. But I, I feel like in life we need to accept that some things need to be left unfinished. And um, completionists are... <laughs> we, we, we sometimes get ourselves into trouble by um, trying to complete things that should never really be completed. And I feel like Caliber Beach is one of those, those things where so much has changed in the way I conceived of um, how to accomplish... Uh, what I wanted to in that series that it, it, my goals now for it totally don't match where I started and I I don't like really the map I made in a lot of ways and the way the detailing of it I there are a lot of things that I would totally prefer not to have in that project point is no more Calavera Beach until further notice probably ever however that is probably not the end of my uh, Southern Californian adventures um although future southern californian adventures will be political not or at least will probably be political rather than just building a nice little beach town uh, if that makes any sense anyway we are currently still building the infrastructure for this this area we built the hillside or terraformed it whenever i say terraform there's somebody who comments that it's landscape terraforming is like 
changing the landscape of another planet. Uh, somebody second that if, that if that's the case. I don't know. I was, I'll try to stop saying terraforming if that's incorrect. Anyway, the, the valley in here between these hills that we made is it's got a highway flowing through it and we're going to sort of have like a, a diamonds uh, interchange here with the, this road that's going to connect the various industrial parts of this this area. I plan on having tons of warehouses here. There, there's going to be a lot of, um, you know, sort of zoning segregation. Like there, we're not going to have tons of industrial next to residential. Um, Seattle specifically has tons and tons of warehouses and other industrial development in a very, very set area uh, that doesn't really bleed into the residential portion of the city to a large degree and my understanding from what people have commented is that's probably because of geology i need to look into that more but that's uh the understanding that i have like apparently the the land under where the industrial uh part of town is located is has a different um sort of composition than other land and it's more of a swamp land that's my understanding at least i might be totally wrong there so don't take that as truth I think I read a comment from one of you about that in the past. Anyway, let's get to placing the, the oil tanks because that's a pretty important part of the episode. Okay, it is now time for the Q&A segment. I haven't done a Q&A segment in a long time, but if you don't know what it is, it is a segment where you ask a question in the comments and I answer as many as I can, basically. Just tag it hashtag Q&A and I'll do my best to uh, get to as many as I can. First question here, how many assets is in Columbia City? Um, I have somewhere between 7,000 and 8,000 at any given time. You know, depending on whether or not I've cleared my asset list recently. Um, next question is from Schlubbers. Do you think you will be on $2.20 in Skib's podcast? I don't know. Hopefully. That would be fun. I really like that podcast. And the episodes I've listened to, I definitely enjoyed. I, I'd recommend checking it out if you haven't already. The City Slickers podcast. I'll link in the description. It's like a City Skylines podcast with a bunch of different creators. Lots of fun. Definitely recommend checking that out. But to answer the question, hopefully. Um, okay, next question from Alexander is... What is your favorite sports team? I know nothing about sports. I don't even know anything about road cycling, um, professional road cycling. Like, I, I don't even follow uh, professional cycling, even though I'm a cyclist. Like, I don't really follow sports. I used to follow esports. I probably should start following professional cycling at least. Um, yeah, I, I know nothing about sports. Next question from Cameron is, would you rather live in Vancouver or Seattle? I would... Um, based on those two, I've never been to either, but I'd probably rather live in Vancouver for a couple of reasons, mostly because it is really close to the mountains and you can really easily escape the city on your road bike and just be in the mountains half an hour later, based on what I know. And that sounds pretty cool. Because, I mean, in Berkeley here, it's like, I can, you know, I'm, everything's really walkable, it's great, but then I can get on my bike, and then 20 minutes later, I'm in the hills, and that's, that's really amazing. Um, I'm really not sure if you can get that experience in Seattle, um, at least areas of Seattle that are close to downtown where I'd want to live. In Vancouver, you can get both the, the city and the access to nature, um, or at least um, to mountains. Obviously, you have the the sound in Seattle that you have access to for sure, but I don't know. Uh, both cities are amazing, and I i mean, I'd like to live in probably both of them at some point in the future. Next question from TJ Stir. Is City Skylines your first building game you've played, or have you played other building games before, such as Planet Coaster or SimCity games? Uh, yeah, it's my first. I I never played any other. I mean, actually, I bought Planet Coaster, but I only played for like seven hours. I really couldn't get the hang of it. Uh, but yeah, it's my first, um, for sure. Next question from Pull: Has building Columbia City made you actually consider moving to Seattle sometime in your life? I mean, 
I guess my interest in the Pacific Northwest has definitely grown since I started this series. I think it's probably the most beautiful region in the country, landscape-wise, and I think a lot of people would probably agree with me on that. I just don't know if I could deal with um, the amount of um, gloomy weather there is, uh, although that's kind of a cliche thing to say about moving to the Pacific Northwest. I feel like you might get used to it once you move there. Just The, the temperature um in the in the region just sounds amazing just combined with the access to such beautiful forests really close to um the city that that's really appealing to me um i mean at this point i'm liking sort of the the temperature of the east bay uh here in the bay area with uh, much more sun than you might get in the pacific northwest but we don't have the forests that are as beautiful although there are lots of beautiful redwood forests around here so i enjoy that but yeah to answer your question definitely have considered um, that as you know, possible for the future, but I'm really not sure. Uh, I'd say like I'd be more likely to move to Vancouver than Seattle, as I might have sort of alluded to before. But yeah, I, I'd like um, Pacific Northwest generally as a region is really interesting to me for sure. Uh, but yeah, that's basically it for the the Q and A segment. Ask your questions in the comments. Hashtag Q and A, and I'll get to as many as I can. Right now we're working on the hillsides, just placing a bunch of trees, and I'm sort of refining the terraforming a little bit here. I'm sorry I haven't really talked too much about what's going on in game this episode, but I think you get the idea based off of the Google Earth imagery that I showed you earlier on in the video of what we're doing here. I'm just trying to recreate the vibe of this um, sort of hillside, um, you know, field of oil tanks. We'll build a refinery nearby in a future episode. I'm trying not to go too crazy with these trees, and you'll see that at this point, I'm just trying to add some like hardwoods um, next to the tanks themselves, just some deciduous trees. But the, for the most part, I'm using my pine forest brush with Grey Flames pine forest low try trees, which I'm going to be using basically everywhere in the city from now on. Like Grey Flames got so many collections of ridiculous like ridiculously good pacific northwest trees like beyond what i could ever even imagine asking for like and they're they're so perfect but there's so many to keep track of and i just want to go for the lowest try trees possible at least outside of the city in the areas that we're not really going to look at too much and maybe i'll add some deciduous trees in the future here as well but for the most part i'm just going for these pine forests or the yeah like the pine forest brush that i've got um, here and that's working out for me pretty well uh, and I'm actually adding a fence on the exterior of the um, the you know, I guess the facility here I'm just placing a network fence because I figure that probably makes sense for something like this at least an operation at this scale is probably gonna have a pretty big tall perimeter fence I'm not sure if it would be this tall but it kind of looks satisfying uh, placing it here but yeah we'll definitely be doing some interesting development around here it's gonna be very industrial like yeah like basically my understanding is just the area that Seattle's industrial zone is in is just totally prone to liquefaction um, so it's just I'm not sure if the the reason all that it's all industry there is because of that but I assume so and we're yeah maybe we're gonna do something similar to that i don't know um but yeah we'll ge generally have the industry in the same area and th this particular area will be very very uh heavily populated by the oil industry um not necessarily for extraction but uh for you know oil shipments we're gonna build like an oil harbor over here um all, all that kind of stuff which is um i mean probably gonna happen in a port city this big but I wanted to make sure that our, our oil harbor was kind of unique, so I put I put the storage for it on a hill, and we'll work on the oil harbor itself in a future episode. I'm doing one last little thing here, because the shoreline looked a little barren, so I want to do a little bit of development here. So I work on a kind of a warehouse area here. I'm using the Ronix Rural Roads, which, like, 
they're so good. I mean, if you don't have these already, definitely grab them. I've been using them tons uh, here in Columbia City, and I, I'm sure I'll find a lot of uses for them in the Netherlands, which, by the way, the Netherlands is, I mean, I'm just uploading that whenever I feel like. I'm uploading whatever series I want to whenever I feel like it. Right now, I'm feeling Columbia City. That series is obviously not dead. Love the Netherlands, and I have so many plans for it. I just kind of feel like building in um, some of the more undeveloped areas in Columbia City right now because the frame rate's kind of good in these areas and it's a lot of fun. And I don't know, I really, I, I just enjoy it. And I've been riding around a lot of uh, pine forests recently and I want to build pine forests and at least areas populated with pine trees uh, here in game. Yeah, I don't know. I really don't know what this little settlement here is, by the way. There's a warehouse, there's like a tugboat and a pier. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to give a little character to the shoreline here. We'll be able to take a look in just a moment at what it really looks like, because everything sort of went by pretty quickly this episode, but uh, it's all pretty manageable, I, I promise. We got this little bridge over here for the highway going across um, with a, a bike bridge to the, to the right of it. And then, yeah, here's the the um the hillside itself i really like the nature detailing here i mostly just placed clusters of trees they were pretty low try and i placed um uh some surface rocks as well and it looks pretty satisfying i mean if you look at that considering the very limited assets i used and very limited detailing i put into here from afar it looks good and that's really all i care about i don't care about how it looks like up close because getting some a build like this to look really good up close like right when you're next to the uh, the, the gas the oil tanks rather i keep saying gas tanks gas is definitely not the same as oil um yeah when you're up close it looks um very unrealistic but you're not really going to get that to look um as good as you might want to so I I'm just gonna accept that and be happy with this because it looks super satisfying from above and there's um, the build in relation to the rest of the city I love it anyway now it's time to go down onto ground level and sort of get a little more of an atmospheric um, feel here yeah, I, I mean, look at this. We've got the beautiful mountain in the backgrounds. We have these hillsides, which are not really detailed, but they still look super realistic. Um, we're not really going to go too close to the, um, the tanks themselves, because, first of all, most people in the public aren't really going to be going there. Um, so, I mean, this is just, if you're a citizen in columbia city this is really what you're going to be experiencing of these maybe you'll see some um you know, drone shots from above of of these every once in a while this is really what you're going to experience but i i you know maybe that's just my excuse for avoiding going down down there and um seeing how unrealistic um all of it looks on ground level but regardless i'm really happy with it i i haven't really made a build that's this unique um, for an industrial build in a, a long time, so pretty happy with this. And here's our little, I don't really even know what this is, but there's a little pier and something here. It's kind of cool. Um, anyway, end of the episode. Hopefully you all enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like. That would be highly appreciated. I'd like that. It would be nice of you. Um, you can subscribe if you're new around here, hit the bell icon, etc. Uploading every two to three weeks right now, that's my goal. Just trying to stay sane during this crazy online semester. Um, yeah, and if you want to support me, you can head over to my Patreon. Quick shout out to some patrons. Uh, Stephanie Green, Joe Fox, LNX, Tran, and Dre Hammond. Thank you all so much for being patrons and for for your consistent support highly appreciated um and thank you everybody else for watching as well whether you're a patron or not um but if you do want to get some you know shout outs like that head over to my patreon uh you can also get benefits like early access to episodes ad free you can get your name in the credits save game downloads for columbia city stuff like that's over on patreon you could also just buy me a coffee one-time donation that's in the description too um, or if you just want to follow me on Twitter, you can do that too. That's also in the description. But yeah, that's about it. Hopefully you all enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.